Before the athlete starts the test proper, it's always good to let them have a chance to, to get going on the bike, just to check that everything is okay and the setups to their liking. Although this test is designed to measure lactic acid in the blood, it's also worthwhile measuring oxygen uptake during the test. This allows us to look at the cyclist's efficiency and how economical they are. For this reason we ask them to breathe through a mouthpiece arrangement. As the test gets going we start the SRM. And we can see it takes a little bit of time for the athlete to overcome the resistance of the flywheel. Quick check that all the equipment is working, the oxygen uptake measurements are coming through, and away we go. At the start of the test, it's just worthwhile pointing out to the athlete what their aims are, just showing them which cadence that they need to stick at. This angle shows us the SRM display a bit more clearly. The top green figure is the actual power, the figure below the target power, and we've also got cadence and heart rate being measured on screen. We need to get ready to take the blood samples. So, on go the purple gloves, getting the blood collection tubes ready, a small needle to put into the lancet. We take that needle and load the lancet up. And we've now got everything ready to take our blood sample at the end of each three minute stage. We've got a bit of time now before the first blood sample has to be taken, so let's take you through the, through the protocol for today's test. The athlete is pedalling at 100 watts. He's going to stay at this power for three minutes in total. Once those three minutes comes to an end, we take the blood sample. Then, the power output goes up by 20 watts for the next three minute stage to begin. And as you can see from this graph, we keep repeating that pattern every three minutes. The total length of the test depends on the blood lactic acid response that we see. We're also measuring oxygen uptake and heart rate during these stages. Here we come to the end of the first stage and the first blood sample is going to be taken. A small puncture is made in the skin and the first bit of blood wiped away. And then we collect the blood in the tube. About 25 microliters is needed for a sample. And then we give the athlete a bit of tissue just to make sure that the wound doesn't keep bleeding. Once the sample's taken, the blood in the tube needs about a minute to mix. After that short delay, it's time to analyse it using our desktop analyzer. We present the tube to the sipper. Make sure the sipper is right to the bottom of the collection tube. Press the button to aspirate and you can see the blood disappearing from the tube up into the sipper. The sample is then collected and flushed into the mixing chamber where the analysis takes place. Once that sample has gone through, it's time to get ready again for the next one. Okay. 
The desktop analyzers are pretty quick and the result normally comes through in about a minute. This allows us to get the results and enter them into the laptop pretty much straight away. This is great because we can see where the athlete's lactate threshold is during the test. So let's start plotting our data. Here's the first value at 1.3 millimolar at the end of the 100 watt stage. This is a typical value, close to those seen at rest. We're now at the end of the stage of 120 watts, so it's time for another sample. It's quite common in these lactate threshold tests that the athlete will do 10, maybe 12 stages. This allows a thorough profile to be seen from low intensity up until race pace. Let's leave our cyclist to it for a while and come back and see how he's doing later. Our cyclist is still going. He's now reached 220 watts. Time for the next sample. During these collections we have to be quite careful not to squeeze the thumb too hard or else we can destroy the red blood cells. Seven stages in, we're starting to get some nice data now. You can also see from the auction update data, he's starting to work quite hard. At 220 watts, he's using about 3 litres of oxygen, exactly what we'd expect. We've now got the blood lactate sample value at 220 watts, so we can enter that in. As you can see in this graph so far, we've got steady blood lactate concentrations. He's yet to go past his lactate threshold. When blood lactate values are steady like this, it means the rate of lactic acid production in the muscles is being balanced by the blood lactate clearance in the blood. In other words, our athlete's in a nice comfortable steady state. By the time our cyclist reaches 240 watts, his blood lactate concentration has just risen above baseline. Only slightly, but you can just see it, just starting to turn up at 1.8 millimolar. By 260 watts, the blood lactate concentration is really starting to show a rise. 2.5 millimolar now. At 280 watts, at 3.9 millimole, it looks like the blood lactate profile is growing even steeper. We're now in the stage at 300 watts, and as you can see, the blood lactate concentration has risen to 5 millimole. From the profile, we now get a nice clear indication of where our lactate threshold is. At 220 watts. It's the highest intensity we see before the increase in blood lactate concentration. We can also see a second inflection point, 40 watts higher at 260 watts. Here's a chance to look at our heart rates 
during the stages too. And as you can see, there's a nice linear function of heart rate against power. If we add the blood lactate response in on top now, it's quite easy to see how we can use this information to guide our training. If we put here our heart rates at lactate threshold and also our heart rate at the second threshold, we can now begin to guide our training zones. Zones 1 and 2 fall below the first lactate threshold. Just above the first lactate threshold is the region we know as zone 3. Surrounding the region of the second threshold we can fit zone 4. Zone 5 then fits nicely above here. So as you saw from the lactate threshold graph, we actually go quite a few points beyond the lactate threshold, typically up to about 80-85% of someone's maximum. That would equate to around about 10 mile time trial power. And the reason we do that is first of all to make sure we see the lactate threshold, but also to get an indication of the stress the athlete would be going through during their races. We found this is the best approach with our athletes to take because it allows us to get all the data we need and it doesn't actually take much out of them if they're going to do a subsequent VO2 max test. The test has now ended so it's time to get our final sample. The athlete can now just wind down their pedalling and look forward to the VO2 max test ahead. He's still smiling, so it can't have been that bad. This graph shows the oxygen uptake data that we collect during the test. And as you can see, the oxygen uptake actually rises as a linear function of power, so we get a nice straight line. This data also allows us to plot their efficiency. This is how much oxygen you need to drive the power output, and we typically see values of around about 10. This person's not quite as efficient as we would like. Specific training interventions will hopefully allow us to work on the efficiency and take it back towards that target of 10 millilitres per watt 